Welcome back to the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I am the host of this show. I decided to start this show so that I could really explore and get to know some of the people who are doing things here in Colorado Springs and just having a good old time discussing business, discussing what drove them to start their businesses, entrepreneurs talking on this podcast once a week, every Monday. Let's do it, baby. And I am also a entrepreneur here in Colorado Springs as well. I run a video production company. But on today's episode, we have on my friend, Frank Sinclair. Frank Sinclair, he is one of the first people I got to, to really get to know here in Colorado Springs and uh, really helped me uh, get, get dip my foot into the community and get to know some other people. We're about to get an interview, discuss why he started his business and what he's done and some of the struggles he's had. And let's get it started. This is a weekly show where I interview business owners and entrepreneurs from Colorado Springs, in Colorado Springs, doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. Yeah. So I'm here with my friend Frank Sinclair. We're about to do this podcast, the second episode of the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. And yeah, so uh, introduce people to uh, to yourself, I guess. I said that backwards, I think. Well, no, that's okay. That's all right. It's a podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And that's an incredible thing. I just want to plug Andrew, first of all, before I introduce myself, is that in case you haven't seen it, uh, Andrew did a, a, a video for, with me called The Faces of Homelessness several months ago, and I've gotten ray reviews from his editorial and video nice. uh, standpoint. People are just uh, raving about the work he did with us in that. Thank That's you, cool. Andrew. Yeah. We're so glad to have you in the Colorado Springs community. Yeah, for right sure. Now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually interested. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, Want to want to hear your perspective and what you've experienced with that video and and has it made the impact you wanted it to make? Well, I don't know because I quite frankly I don't know if I really had a a uh, in impacted mind. Okay. Well, the, the impact for me meant that uh, the most people plausible that we could get uh, uh, engaged with the video just to see that. People that are homeless are just regular humans, mm -hmm. you know, like you and I, and that um, me having experienced it before, that that's not the destination and maybe part of the journey, but mm -hmm. people go from that, through that journey all the time to better things yeah. or more things in their lives. So that's really, I'm just trying to humanize parts of society that people fear mm -hmm. and that people naturally uh uh, stay away from because uh, they just simply don't have enough information. For sure. So, yeah. so with your business, do you think that's part of one of your uh, missions? It with, is with with the the business you started, which is Dream Again, <laughs> Dream Again LLC or Dream Again Business Consulting. Uh, it is. It's it's the highlight the the human condition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, specifically for Dream Again is to highlight it from a business perspective. People from a uh, concept or thinking about an idea for a business mm -hmm. all the way up to five years. So in that space, so I'm an for entrepreneur sure. coach. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's uh so who would you say your main your ideal client would be? Well, uh, I would. I used to say anybody struggling in business between those that time frame, but that's everybody. So yeah, <laughs> I, don't know I mean, the KFC guy started his business when he was like sixty five. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was 60, 60 when I started this okay, business. Nice. Actually, yeah, three years in, and um, yeah. So people who are in business and would like the benefit. Here's what I tell everybody I work with. If you trust me with your story, now you got to trust me. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're holding back and not able for pain, whatever the reasons, the wall that keeps you from really engaging deeply into your story. If you can trust me with your story, we can find your purpose. And if you find your purpose for being, the reason that you have placed on this for earth, sure. uh, things open up to you because yeah. you start spinning your wheels wondering, what should I be doing? Am I supposed to be? This is the place you were put on earth to be. Definitely, yes. Yeah. So, so when you say uh, 
trust you with your with their story. What yeah. what is what do you mean by their story? Well, their story. Trust me with what they've navigated so far. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever chapter they're in in their story so far. Trust me with sharing that with me, and we can find the pain points of your story because most of the time that's where people disengage because it's too painful to explore. Yeah, and and they look at it as. Why me? Why did I have to go through this? Why is that a uh, a place where I had to live when someone else had it so much better, et cetera? Those are just that that's energy draining and yeah. nonproductive. Mm-hmm. If you would turn that around and say, oh, why did I get to experience this pain? What was it teaching me to help yeah. uncover the best me as I begin my journey mm-hmm. into business building? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it changes everything. Yeah, man. no, really yeah. Once I, I really, I've been practicing like trying to uh, really find purpose and commitment uh, mm-hmm. lately because you know I feel like I could be doing more than what I am doing all the time, and I think I'll always feel that no matter how much I do. <laughs> but but uh, uh, I, I'm trying to find like I've realized the piece that I've been missing, I think is the commitment piece, which is the only way you can get committed is by finding purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that that's super, super powerful because when you have, when you're committed and you have purpose, you don't even worry about the time that you, you don't, you don't even worry about the time because you're just in it all the time. (laughs) Exactly. And commit. Once you find your purpose, then it's much easier to commit to Mm -hmm. because you say, Oh yes. When those times get tough as they inevitably will, Mm -hmm. uh, then you say, well, you know, they're tough. I'm I'm having a hard time getting traction here, but it's not about me Mm -hmm. because I remember the journey. And I remember the pain that I've experienced to get on this journey. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the unfolding of me. You know what I mean? It wasn't a negative. Matter of fact, I needed those points in time, no matter how difficult they were, so that I can really appreciate the time that I'm presently in. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about uh, putting yourself in hard situations on purpose in order to grow? <laughs> uh, clarify that for me. Uh, give me. Give me an example of what you're talking about. Like with me, uh, just jumping straight into to my business, that mm-hmm. was kind of like a catalyst for me to actually keep things going. And, you know, like the scariness of not having that, paycheck every week right, from right. a job yeah yeah that's scary isn't it yeah <laughs> it's scary you know and i don't know if it's the same for everyone yeah every everyone's story is yeah different. it just depends on as you unfold your story look at it and that could be a catalyst for it could that be um what you need to do sometimes we need to burn the ships right yeah <laughs> burn the ships and just go yeah and just go for it some people it's a slower process maybe they're maintaining their nine to five while they're unwrapping this business plan mm-hmm. and slowly progressing into that part of their mm-hmm. lives there's no right or wrong for sure it's, there's multiple it's ways yeah. tailor-made for the individual yeah yeah and that's is that kind of what you help do you have yeah. kind of help figure out the right path for the right person absolutely for, for the specific person <laughs> for the specific purpose person all right yeah. cool yeah it's not cookie cutter go there are no yeah cookie yeah cutter and that's life. kind of how i do with my videos too like it's it's kind of formulaic in a way but it's it's and like I do multiple kinds of videos, but the main kind of video I do is kind of help business business owners and businesses clarify their message. You know, yeah. it's tailored for them specifically, but there is some kind of process that's formulaic in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not always just you know throwing uh, stuff against the wall and seeing what will stick. But yeah. some people that's <laughs> good though, because for me when I started my business, I was in a good place financially. So the first year I could just throw stuff against the wall yeah. and see what sticks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who knows? Yeah. People are trying to tell me how to navigate it. Mm-hmm. And I do listen and I do take Well that's yeah. how you learn is by doing it. I mean yeah. when something sticks, you know to go all in on it. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was, yeah. Even at sixty I was still trying to uncover Frank. Yeah. And and my main focus today is is helping people not have to wait till they're sixty For sure. to do yeah. that. You know, it's taken me each till I was twenty seven. I mean, I guess that's a lot different for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah. yeah. You just slapped me down by you making that comparison, right? Well, they're, 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 my mentor, he was doing the 17, so it's like, yeah. that's 10 years on me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not right or wrong. Yeah. Think, yeah. We have to stop taking all these things so personally mm -hmm. and stop making comparisons. Oh, yeah, you yeah. You know, because my life is totally different than your life. What mm -hmm. I navigate it, the stuff that I deal with internally are totally different than what you For sure. deal yeah. with. So it's just an individual thing. It really is not individualism mm -hmm. because we best do business through collaboration. Yeah. But finding us is individual because there is no other Andrew. Yeah. You're the only one. Yeah. Andrew, and, Andrew and around. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I can't give someone else's plan to Andrew because mm -hmm. there is no other Andrew but you. For sure. Yeah. So, so for someone listening to this right now who who is maybe building a business or wants to build a business here in Colorado Springs, what would be, what would your, what would be your best advice to them? My best advice is, you know, um, I mean, this is not a sales pitch whatsoever. This is a, a conversation with Andrew, mm -hmm. but everyone needs someone to help them navigate it. Think about the storylines. I mean, almost any movie that you watch, you have a, a, a hero that's trying to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to navigate a process, right? Yeah. And then they bring in a guide. There's always helps the guide, them yeah. navigate the process. For sure. Then they get where they're going, mm -hmm. right? That's life. That's yeah. the reason why movies make it. Mm -hmm. Because they're following the natural progression of life. Yoda to mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker, you know? Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And like every story, I think there's, I don't know if you heard of Joseph Campbell. He, he, wrote, uh, called the, he wrote a book called The Hero's Journey. Mm -hmm. And it, he broke down every like story from like, 2,000, 3,000 years ago to like the most current ones, you know, like the most successful ones, the, the hero goes through that same process. Yep. And Donald Miller in story branding says, Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Work. Yeah. And that to me is a seminal work. He talks almost. about, I think he talks yeah. about Joseph Campbell. In that. Yeah, he does talk that's, about that. That's Joseph. one of my, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the brand story guy. He's, he's, He's he's I've, I listened to the book like three times and, mm. you know, I would love to go to one of his conventions. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. And it's kind of what I kind of do with my video stuff in a way, too. I kind of help businesses build their brand mm. and become likable, knowable and trustable through and, their story. Yeah. Through their story. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's and if you say, well, what I, what I can refine your story, if there's anything I can tell people that are out there listening, that are thinking about business and you go, oh, my stop over analyzing whether it's this is that or whatever get a guide whomever it may be <laughs> even if it's your best friend if they can guide you rightly and, and help you uncover you i who cares you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh so someone that can help guide you because you get in your own way often because there's too many negative messages there oh yeah in every moment of your life you've been there so all of those get thrown back over and over. So you need to have someone help you get out of your own head. For sure. So that you can navigate this journey and uncover whether you're doing what you were put on earth to do. And, and what's cool is like with me specifically, I think I've been able to do that with multiple people just yep. by and, you know, like not not paying anyone anything, yep. just yep. connecting with people and being a human, like, yep. like just Going out there and talking to people because you learn by seeing what they're doing too, yep. and yep. and yep. also like taking in the the things that they say, like looking at their actions, looking at their like for you example, I think you're a pretty good example for someone who's doing a pretty awesome job <laughs> in business. Thank you. Yeah, and you know just just the interactions, I think. Yeah, that you and it can happen that way. It, you know, um, I've had a coach personally myself. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think, you know, if two things that ha happen in coaching to me and you've already illustrated that you don't have to pay someone to do this stuff. And well, you, I recently got a coach a few few a uh, few weeks ago, actually. We, yeah. we did some service training deals. Oh, did you? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I still got one. <laughs> yeah, good, good for you. But whether you do that or not, uh, number one, if you don't make an investment into your own business. Mm -hmm. And here's the scary thing about people. Here's the natural cycle of business. We find something that we do well. Mm -hmm. And then we enlist other people to do the stuff we don't. Yeah. 
And that's what builds business all for around sure. for everyone. That's how you go fast, yeah. too. That's, and that's how you go faster. Yeah. So unless you're willing to do that, and quite frankly, I work with people between concept and five years. So typically, they don't have a lot of money yeah. to invest and in, et cetera. So finding ways that you can invest in your business and, uh, call, you know, you will fight for things that you've invested in. Yeah, you know? exactly. And like before I got this coach... I paid for uh, the. I paid for some mentoring uh, that really helped me buy some people who have run successful video production companies, and that's what my company is. It's a video production company. Exactly. And I paid a good amount of money. Yeah. More money than I probably ever paid for, for anything at one time, and it's it made it made me so dedicated that I was able to will and able and willing. To burn the ships, you know. That's do right. it <laughs> Every time you think about uh, about abandoning it, you have that investment in the back of your mind going, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I'm invested. I'm vested in this stuff. And, and, I, and I believe mm-hmm. that. I, that I was meant to do this, and even though it's tough, you For keep sure. going. Yeah, exactly. You find a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, business building is hard. Yeah, and if you go into this thing going thinking anything other, you think you're gonna hang the shingle, and then everybody's gonna start running to your place mm-hmm. of business yeah. immediately. Then you're deluded. Yeah, <laughs> that just simply does it not the way it works. I've been in this city, Andrew, for 36 years in a row. In a row, <laughs> consecutively, yeah. and no, and I, I'm known. You know, you know yeah. my my um, place of influence in this city yeah. is pretty broad. And yeah, it's pretty Definitely. big. Yeah, but I had a pretty big place of influence before I started business. Yeah, guess what happened? My first six months, no one came. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to prove it. You know, they knew me. Yeah, Yeah. well, Frank, I know you're here, but I don't know you're the coach, you know. And and so you do have to prove it. You have to prove it and you have to be dedicated. I think what's interesting about that approach, too, is that you've built up your reputation, you know, and you had that first. I think the when business really starts flowing is like when everyone's like, Who's that guy? What does he do? Mm -hmm. Like when people are making this question, you're doing something right. (laughs) Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 Every day someone's coming and say, oh, so-and-so told me to go meet you. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I mean, daily. I mean, lots of times. Mm -hmm. And and, and I I had one goal in mind when I began. People have monetary goals. They have other goals, maybe so many customers, whatever. Mm -hmm. Who knew what my goal was? Was I wanted to be the best connected small business guy in this city. Oh, nice! That was my one goal, and that's a, an achievable goal. It's not. It's not delusional. No, nope. no. Nope. It's definitely realistic. And Within my wheelhouse, yeah. being who I am as a human being, being how much I love people and how much I love business, that goal was way attainable. For sure. Now, there's no way to truly measure it, but I bet there's very few business people in this city that don't know my name. That's that's I think there's a few way, there's one way to measure it that I've been able to just, you know, uh, an anecdotal measurement, I yeah. guess you could say. Absolutely. But so many people I've talked to, they were like, oh, Frank Sinclair. Yeah, I know him. <laughs> and yeah. like, you know, and, you know, but and there's still so many people who don't know you too, at yeah, the same time. Yeah. <laughs> this is a transient city. Yeah. So but people are coming exactly. and going all the time. So it's impossible to have mm-hmm. so much bandwidth that every human here knows but you. But it's also <laughs> insane at the same token that so many people that I've made connections with and became friends with have known you. Like yeah. outside of, you know, the networking groups that we both go to, right. like people outside of that yeah. know you too. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. that's that's proof right there that you're, you're – you're achieving that goal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Proof is in the pudding, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. can talk. But, you know, are you going to do, are you going to make goals that are achievable? Mm-hmm. Because if not, then you discourage yourself within the first six months or one year of your business. Yeah. Make achievable goals. Make them uh, have a plan. Mm-hmm. Lots of people don't, and it's quite, you know, I'm not a big planning guy myself. A lot I like of times to go I to like to yeah. just <laughs> off the cuff and see how it's going to work. Yeah. Be fun. <laughs> That's my yeah. style, too. Yeah. <laughs> it is. But I've like gone back, and now that my wife is part of our business, doing the back end work and et cetera, mm-hmm. you know, she doesn't think that way. She thinks that we need to have something down and I think it's yeah I think it's realistic not. that you have something down that you want to accomplish. One one of my tasks on my list of tasks is to write out 
milestones and goals for 2020. Absolutely. And I, I do want to just have those because even if, even if I don't like reach all of them, mm-hmm. like it's just to have them there knows that I'm making progress. And also if you don't have a, have a destination, like, like any, any yeah. will take you there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that's become important for me too, is to have some goals that, mm-hmm. that are reasonable and not so easily attainable that it, you could disregard you waking up. Yeah. You yeah. Know, no, that sure. they stretch you. And that's and how you get into the flow zone. zone. Like there's like uh flow. It's like, you know what flow is, right? Yep. You know, when you're in the when you're in the zone, when you're in the flow, oh, yeah. the flow mode, like is when things are just going by. Time is going by so fast, like, like you don't even realize it, and like you just like, whoa, the whole day went yeah. by. And like the Dude. way you get in the flow is by not pushing yourself too past your your threshold, but also challenging yourself. But yeah, you can't absolutely. go. There's like a sweet spot. A sweet. There zone. is a sweet spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Athletes talk about that all the time. Like when a quarterback gets in his sweet spot, mm-hmm. he's in rhythm. He yeah, can't, can't, exactly. He can't miss a throw. For sure. A basketball player can't miss a shot. And you can get you that know? way with business, too. You get that way in business Yeah, and, and like well. one yep. thing I've known with, with uh, what my coach has helped me do is, you know, really like have a strict morning and evening routine. Mm. Like re- really like, you know, have a hard cutoff at a certain time, like no business and like and waking up in the morning and do it do go, doing like morning routine with exercise and everything because I think health is the foundation yep. to to happiness and <laughs> health is the foundation to everything else. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard work unless mm-hmm. you're taking care of yourself for in sure. A lot of ways, mentally, spiritually, physically, yeah, all of those ways because we're we're not segmented humans. Those are all part and parcel of who we are as human beings. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So. uh I don't think we've talked about uh, what really inspired you to start uh, Dream Again. I don't know how much time you have here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. All right, cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the, the, uh, as I look back and I started to trace back as I was thinking about why, why, why do I do that? Well, because I've had to dream again so much, first of all. I've worked in corporate mm-hmm. life. I did many years of leadership development, interpersonal communications and corporations that I consider foundational work of my academic life mm-hmm. um, and practical because I did a lot of workshops and et cetera, et cetera. So I learned how they really put context around this work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my kids, as I mentioned to you before we got on this, vi- this podcast, mm-hmm. that I have three kids that live in Denver, all three are business executives. And all three, my young, my middle daughter was a CFO at 26. Oh, nice. Yeah. My son's business is a $30 million company now. Awesome. You know, my youngest daughter is the youngest CEO of a major trades company in America. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> uh, seeing how they were tracking with their lives really became a touch point for me mm-hmm. as I was evaluating my own. Yeah. Because their mom and I are the common denominator in life. And please don't make that sound like I'm taking credit because these guys are hyper driven. Yeah. Probably way more than I've ever been. Yeah. But <laughs> at the same time, we do believe that influence begets influence. So definitely, yeah. Yeah. So having to see that. And to see that their forward movement is so good, I say, ah, what would it look like if I started a business? Most of them going to be younger people because younger people have more entrepreneurial drive. For sure. That, that I coach people between uh, concept and five years in their business because it's atrocious. The fallout rate of businesses within the first five years. Oh, yeah. It's like 90%. It is. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? So I'm not being discouraged. So the opposite of that is encouragement. Yeah. So I made that out the reading a book four years ago, the hallmark phrase of my business. When you think of Frank, you think of encouragement. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's. And what was that? I like that uh, the... Chief encouragement officer. Chief encouragement officer. <laughs> yeah. Some people think that's a gimmick, but it isn't a gimmick. I like it, it yeah. It describes, mm-hmm. and more than chief executive officer, it describes my place and my footprint in life. So encouraging people. So, yeah. So uh, three years ago, I officially launched uh, Dream Again Business Consulting, Dream Again LLC, uh, bridging the gap between discouragement and hope is our tagline. Nice. So that's the reason I'm in it. Nice. That's awesome, man. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
It's been incredible. I love the journey and I love waking up every day, getting to hear new stories. For sure. That's got to be exciting. Like really helping, like you could, you could really be at this, the beginning of lots of people's businesses Mm -hmm. and you could watch them grow. That's Mm got to be really, really fun. It is. What a way to go out. Yeah. (laughs) But I'm into, you know, and I I don't think I'm going to die tomorrow. (laughs) Who knows? You know, you never know. Yeah. yeah, Life isn't a guarantee to any of us, but, but when I say go out, Mm -hmm. I want my endings and my legacy to be bigger than my beginnings and my middle. For sure. So the twilight of my life, I wanted to go out. And if you think of Frank Sinclair when he's gone, say that that guy encouraged me. Nice. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we'll build we'll build a statue for you right. No, now. don't right do where that. your bush was. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no statue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. yeah, yeah. General Palmer don't need that thing in the middle of the road. Okay. Even though people see it, because everyone knows General Palmer around the car on the mm-hmm. spring. So you know, we'll, but, we'll make yeah. it a giant <laughs> giant inflatable. <laughs> 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 <You're funny. laughs> so what what have been some of the the struggles that you've had with your business and how did you overcome come them well i'm still overcoming them yeah you know so uh i think the biggest struggle is frank sinclair is just like anyone else you know I, uh behind all of the confidence that people see and and the ability to navigate and integrate and all this with people is a very insecure human being i feel you, yeah So, yeah, so a human being with a tendency to Mm self-sabotage and to uh, 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 tear himself down. So the biggest challenge for me is recognizing those moments when they want to come and try to do that to my life again. I feel you. Yeah. So those those are my biggest challenges. and, And I don't think anyone ever gets to the point that they conquered yeah. Self-sabotage and et cetera, insecurity. What have been some of the things yeah. that you've uh, done to to help overcome come that when it, when it does arise? Well, there's things that I have like meditating and, and reading and, and things that I do early morning because I want to make sure when I walk out of that house, I'm encouraged. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be able to encourage anyone else if I'm not myself. Definitely. So, yeah. so doing those kind of things, things that I love, the things that, that I was created to love. What well, gets you excited? What does, what, what, what does that for you? Well, well, the energy comes from the people. I am I am energized by human beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just knowing I'm going out to do that and being able to separate them not making it or not being able to follow instructions and do things and their business is falling off the map, uh, separating that from my own personal failure or mm-hmm. or success. And God, those are challenging because you can lock in and say, I'm so invested in Andrew. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't make it, I take it personally. Yeah. But, and I think, I think that would be hard for me at least because I would want to be so invested in, 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 in someone if, if I was helping them, you know, right. grow their business and you were there from the start. Yeah. That, that could be very challenging, definitely. Yeah. But you can't make this, uh, you know, I, I don't ever say you don't make it emotional because I'm an emotional being. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I grow to love the people that I work with and vice versa. But there has to be a point of separation that you know that you've done what you could. Is there a process that you have with your business when you when you're selecting someone to work with? Do you do you work with just anyone? No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. think that's right for them or for me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We sit down and we we talk about uh, some of the touch points that we, you and I have already discussed in this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather, you're willing and to honestly, I'm I'm, I'm I don't uh, I'm not a big assessment guy, mm-hmm. even though I know they're helpful and et cetera. My own personal experience in assessments, and I was in business uh, doing leadership work. Uh, for a long time and assessments were the hallmark of that work you know is that within six months people forget about the assessment and they just simply uh, uh, default to who they are 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. And those aren't guiding them anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Especially one or two failures along the way or perceived failures, they just don't. And so I don't want to throw the baby out the bathwater. That just simply isn't my way of navigating. We just simply make notes. I initial conversation with, I don't put a time frame on, but doesn't charge anyone for. Mm-hmm. We need to see if we're good for each other. No, for sure, because I think there's certain people that, you know, that probably just your the skills you have you just don't, it's not in your wheelhouse to help that specific person. Absolutely, it, it would be doing a disservice, like you said to yeah, them. Yeah, to, to, to be trying to even help them. <laughs> right, right. That doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Why would I? Because I believe with coaches, and sometimes coaches work outside of this thing. I'm getting ready to say, and I, I don't think it's right because of, there's a measurable outcome for work you do for me. Mm-hmm. Right, I can see it. It's visual work. Yeah. So there's an outcome. Yeah. So a lot of times coaches uh, don't expect their clients to expect from them an outcome, a measurable outcome. Okay. So we have touch points along the way. We need to see your business growing. So tell me, what is your goals? Mm-hmm. What, what do you want to see at what different space? And we spend six months together and nobody has to re-up or we, at that time, if we had worked together, maybe that's we discover it then. Hopefully we discover it before we go into the six month thing. Yeah. yeah. But maybe we discover it more. Almost 99% of my clients say, let's continue. For sure. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're seeing measurable growth and number one, them as human beings and number two, their business and the measurables. And they're, and they're like, okay, we're, yeah. we're doing something here. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Every coach needs to be held to that standard. No, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, Frank, I think this has been an awesome conversation. I think we can uh, – safe to say that uh, I think we've explored your business and what, <laughs> what it is here you're doing in Colorado Springs. Uh, yeah, I believe and, so. And that's uh, kind of the, the gist of the show. Right. And uh, – I, I had a really good time talking with you right now. I always have a good time talking with you. And, Likewise. And I'm trying to figure out how to wrap these 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 episodes up, Frank. Help me out. How, how can I do that? Well, just so you know, <laughs> you know, if Colorado Springs is your target area, mm-hmm. you know, Colorado Springs, I've had the uh, pleasure of being able to engage Frank Sinclair today with Dream Again Business Consultant. Join me next time as we explore. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's good. With another guest, right? <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll see you guys next week, and don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you're on, exactly. so that you can get those notifications each week. Because we're going to be having an awesome person who is doing awesome things in this community of Colorado Springs. Indeed. And yeah, yeah. that wraps it up. That all wraps right. it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's all for this episode of the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. This was episode. Episode two. Stay tuned for episode three next Monday. Make sure you subscribe on all of the platforms that you're on. It's also on YouTube if you didn't know. If you just want to listen to it and let it play through YouTube, if that's the way you like to listen to podcasts, but it will also be on Apple Podcasts soon. Still not, still not on Stitcher yet, but it's waiting to be approved. So I mean, it might be by the time you listen to this, but it's it's available on uh, Google Podcast, Anchor, and a few other places, Castbox. So. Uh, Yeah, we will see you guys next week. That was a really fantastic interview. I can't wait to do more.